Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's episode of Ask Chrome. I'm Case. Uh, I'm the technical writer for DevTools, and I'm here with... Adam Argyle, CSS DevRel on Google Chrome. And creator of VizBug. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yes. VizPlug. <laughs> <laughs> so leading off, um, this, what's Ask Chrome all about? Uh, we take questions earlier in the month about anything related to DevTools, and then we answer your questions here in this video, and then we're gonna do a YouTube premiere, and I'll be there in the live chat to answer any more questions you have about what we talk about. And if you're watching this later, like a regular YouTube video, you can leave questions in the comments and I'll get back to you there. So let's start off with Anthony Cook asked, what's the best way to troubleshoot janky animations? Um, I guess first we'll jump into DevTools and show off the paint flashing tool. Perfect. And we have a little pre-made uh, demo just to show how it all works. So first you go Command Shift P to open the command menu, and then type something like paint and run the show paint flashing rectangles command. And now when we do an animation. Or even just hover over nodes. Yeah. So that one's fine. Honestly, it looks a little janky, but the, yeah. the green around that DevTools logo, we'll do it again. So the Chrome one, theoretically fine. And then the green box around the DevTools logo means that the browser has to re repaint in order to uh, do that animation. Yeah, since it's staying green, it means it's sort of being continuously punched. Right. Because uh, uh, it would otherwise flash green and go away. Right, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, and it's just a cue that you're doing a um, inefficient technique in order to uh, animate your node. Um, next thing related to animations, we want to show off the animations tab. And maybe for that one, Adam, you can uh, take over. Oh, yes. The, the keyframers have made yeah. a very phenomenal animation. It's a GUI effect, uh, which is always great for showing off uh, animation tools. So I'll pop open here. I'll do Command-Shift-P to bring up my uh, command palette again. I'll type in animations and say show animations. So let's pop it open in the drawer. Just so you know, you can also invoke it from here. And once it's on, it's waiting for interactions. And so I'll create an interaction that does the animation. Fancy. And I'll close it. And then the best part is here, I can slow it down to 25% and hover again and see the animation little preview. Uh, or go to 10 and invoke it again and see it in super slow-mo. Oh, I liked the wobble at the nice, bottom. Nice, That was nice. interesting. Let's go back to Hundy. Close it up. And then the last little thing is you can scrub this timeline as well and just really lean into that that's that spot right yeah right the sweet spot that's yeah. the sweet spot yeah anyway. you really just break yeah. down yeah what's going on with the animation and all that and then i guess come back to the um specifically janky animations debugging thing uh, we'll go back to the uh demo animation oh, that i the created frames per second meter could be nice here too yeah that's a good um, one let's pull that open yeah so you get this little uh layover on top of your um, Ooh, viewport, and it gives you an idea. Yeah, that one looks like the, it's staying at Yeah, the spikes 60. are good to look at, too. The spikes often show like a start and a stop. Right, um, right. Do or extra again. work. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. Maybe not that helpful in this case, but it's just another layer yeah. of information. If there was a heavy jump, you would have seen it. But Right, so going back yeah. to the uh, animations tab, when we do that, a way to debug the janky ones is you can... Uh, Click here and it'll open the element in the viewport. And one thing that I do is I go to the event listeners tab and it shows me like the the event um, that's related to the animation, in this case, transition end. Mm -hmm. And we can jump to the source and I get a better idea about what classes are getting added to the uh, to the element and so on and so forth. I saw something while you're doing that that I've never seen before. What's that? Um, go back to the elements panel. And in this event listeners, when you hovered over that event, you yeah. can remove it? Yeah. Uh, I think you can remove, yeah, the event. Yeah. There that you go. So it should. It's crazy. It should not work now. Let's see. Uh, something, I guess, because we're removing the, uh, like, the. The animation's still completed, yeah. but we're not removing a class at the end of it, yeah. I guess. So it's yeah, probably just stuck in its final position. Yeah, watch, we'll just do it with this, and we'll remove the click event listener for this. And I then just, now, the I animation I you could remove work. events. The only way I've ever removed an event in my entire career is through 
node dot remove or yeah. yeah it's just the old school like vanilla the more you know wow cool <laughs> all right let's move on to the next one um stuart asked it would be wonderful if layout showed why an element is the size it is somehow at the moment it's really hard to work that out and requires a bunch of css knowledge and guesswork the browser must know though maybe there's some way of exposing that to us uh, what are your thoughts on this? Adam? Okay, I'm immediately empathizing because uh, there are borders and margins and padding and more that all go into the calculated width and height of something. You also have um, properties that want to be uh, sort of like dynamically content based, and then you have other sizes that you want to be very explicit, like this is height 200 pixels, uh, and all that coming together into the reason why a final height and width were determined. That's something I would rather have the computer do than my brain. It's complicated for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tall order, but I think there's a lot that we can do and improve around this. Like the way that I think about it is we have Lighthouse for load performance and SEO and accessibility and stuff. And uh, this is pretty much Lighthouse for CSS. Mm. Why is it behaving this way? I, yeah. think, I think it's a very ripe area of innovation for tooling. I agree. Like, just bake the guidance right in like we have in other places, but put it there in CSS. Right. Yep. And shout out to Firefox. Uh, they have, I think, shipped the first features around this idea. And accessibility. Yeah. Not just, uh, like, why a CSS prop is, you know, being applied or not. Yeah. 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 Super yeah. cool. Our next question is about JavaScript. And Louis, or Louis? Louis, I think he's from Louis. Netherlands, yeah. Oh, okay, Louis. Louis, thank you for the question. Is there a way to go to the definition of a JS function without using mouse clicks? I typed a function name, evaluate, and then some tab action? Perhaps a keyboard shortcut? That does sound nice. Yeah, exactly. So I think we get the job done most of the way here. Um, what you can do is we'll open up DevTools, and then let's close the console, and... If you know the name of the file, uh, you press Command-P, and this opens the, it's kind of the command menu, um, but th what this lets you immediately do is open files, and the name I'm looking for here is main.min.js, and then we've got um, a minified file, and what you can do here is click pretty print. Pretty print, it's fun to say, and it works really great. Yeah, and then you open that back up, and press, uh, you enter a at symbol. Classic. Yep. Yeah, and it's auto-completing all the function definitions that's finding on the page. In this case, for example, let's say I want to uh, debug this start function. And I execute it, and there we go. We see the definition. And if you don't know what file it's in, what you can do, which we'll is close these, you can open the global search, and We'll search for uh, the start function, and it gives you, you know, a few results. And it's maybe not the best that it's trying to search through a minified file, but if you, it gives you a general idea of where it's coming up, and you can search there, and we'll, you know, pretty print minify again. And another handy thing is if you press Command F or Control F, you get the search UI within uh, the Sources panel, and we can search there, and it will jump us to each instance of the the name that we're looking for. Okay, moving on, we had a few questions about the network panel, and Bernard Hoffman asked, is there a way to clear only the completed network requests? And yes, I think there is. So let's show it <laughs> off. Uh, let's go to Google Maps, and we'll go to the network panel, and close the search. So DevTools has a bunch of keyword special properties that you can use in the filter box. One of them is status code. Just let it autocomplete. And if we do 200, we see the requests that uh, have that HTTP response code status. Um, and what Bernard wants here is to essentially filter out these requests. This is even a good example. Look, there's like a long polling happening. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So what we can do there is put a minus sign in front of it, and that turns it into a negative filter. So in other words, any uh, request that matches this will be filtered out. And if we reload, we can kind of just keep track of 
all the stuff that's happening. You can reload with the filter and the filter persists. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is super cool. Yeah. So maps seems to be doing well. It's mostly 204s. And you can do multiple of these, like you could get uh, do another one for 204, and I think we'll see nothing. Pretty much hides them all. Wait, in this same syntax though, with the minus, um, I'm curious what other f like characters there are, and I know that you can do it in the styles panel. Can you demo that really uh, quick? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. super cool in there. It's like the same syntax. You learn it once, so you can use it in network yeah. and styles. Well, these these uh, I think larger than is a good one. You can do. What is it? 100? Yeah. We'll do 10K and that'll show you things that are bigger than 10 kilobytes. Oh, snap. That's a handy so one. So if you've got a performance budget, you can sort of pop that right in and see who's busting it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sick. We'll link to the uh, documentation that lists out all these properties. And then going back to your other question, yeah, the filter bar in the text bar or in the CSS uh, styles pane is very underrated. Uh, you can do things like margin and it will only show you margin properties or whatever matches that. And like, what's one that you use a lot? Uh, color. Yeah, where's it getting the color from? Or font size. Yeah. So this one just has, yeah, we're inspecting the body, so. Yeah, cool. not too exciting over there. Not too exciting. Yeah, that one's so weird, because yeah. I feel like every time you hit the styles panel, you have intent. It's usually not just a stroll in the park. Let me casually right. walk through the styles and just see what's going on in here. You're like, no, I have a goal and I need to, this is a way to go straight towards it. Yeah, I'm big on the computed pane for that same reason, where it just tells you the oh, final. Oh, look, a filter in the computed pane. Yeah, yeah, there's one there too. We can nice. do, uh, what's an interesting one? Just height, yeah. And you can still expand it and see the cascade if you need it. Apparently there's not much of a cascade here. Whoa, and then, oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, we had a question about general productivity. Are there any lesser known configurations that a newcomer might not notice originally, but will definitely increase productivity? Adam, do you have any? Uh... All right, newcomer, popping open dev tools, need to make some customizations. All right, things that I tend to do whenever I launch is I go set my spaces to two. Uh, you can change that mm -hmm. from four to two. We can show these off too. Oh yeah. We'll go into settings and where's that one? Sources? It's in a drop down yeah. right here. Yeah. Default indentation. Eight. Space. Yeah. <laughs> Eight tabs. Tab. <laughs> Should ruin everything. Okay, cool. All uh, right, that's fun. The other one, I, I'm a I'm a dark mode mm. connoisseur, so I always dark theme. Um, some you know, would argue that's, you know, productivity, but eh, yeah, it's preference. Well, I mean, everyone loves dark theme. We'll show that one off. So you can do command menu, uh, command shift P or control shift P, and just switch to dark theme, and then you we get the dark make theme. A, I'm, okay, I'm gonna make a CL that adds an Easter egg so that you can say, uh, join the dark side. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then it'll do this one. We, we need it, here. Yeah. high priority. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that'll skate right through. Wait, I had another customization, which is, um, I like dragging my tabs around. Yeah, that's a good one. So like, um, I'll bring performance over. First. Uh, first. Performance right? first. Um, let's, let's get see what else the, do I do. Uh, Oh, this is this reminds me. Like, look, I see layers there. All right. Um, and I like pulling open layers and rendering and um, performance monitor and right. animations. So you have to go more tools and then uh, enable layers, and you get yep. the layers tab, and this lets you like investigate yeah, I get the rotate the, right there. It's you cool. Can rotate the layers. Looks oh, like it's just one oh, layer. Right? Well done, whoever made this yeah. single layer for the GPU. Although I bet if you press, maybe it'll do something. Press what? Here, you take it. Well, it's an air horn. It's, a, it's an air horn, so that's what I mean by press. Uh, I'm happy with that so far. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, you said rendering. Th there is also, yeah, if you go down to, you press yeah. escape to open the uh, drawer. So, but, yeah, we have uh, like changes. Oh, changes, which no one knows one. changes exist. And right, it's totally here. Changes Let's and, change the page and show. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. How, now we're just, uh, we're getting into crazy <laughs> stuff now. Uh, color? White? Yeah. Huh? No. Uh, oh, we have to change one of oh, the... Oh, maybe uh, I, yeah, I have here to go. go. Display grid instead of flex. Display grid. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, there you go. There's your diff. Right. And all its Yeah, beauty. but then you can see this long... I think we need oh, because like it's a minified print. file. Yeah. yeah. So that's not too nice. Anyway, changes. It's there. It's a good one. Sometimes. Uh, what's another Performance good one? monitor. Performance uh, monitor is a good <gasps> one. That would have been good for the jank hunt. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah, so, well, hopefully... That person's still watching. 
<laughs> Performance Miner is a good one. It is. All right. Oh, wait, one more. Rendering. I like rendering, too. Sorry. Rendering. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We could do... I'll just go back there and rendering and we could do... Yeah. Uh, oh, look. Here's some of the things we were talking about from the command palette, but you can do them here. Right. Paint flashing, highlight... Layout you know. shift regions is a good one. Uh, you're talking about print. Yeah. Emily print. I really this like this. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we could do it on, like, a Wikipedia page. Totally. Uh, yeah, let's check out the print style sheet. There it yeah, is. Yeah, so you can see Wikipedia. Hey, this is like reader mode. <gasps> exactly. You can just browse. Talk about that productivity okay. boosters. Uh, and different type of productivity boosters. <laughs> I just booster. want to mention one more thing too. With like why I pop open all those tabs is because they're not there to begin with. And so you're talking about like first time spinning it up or you haven't spun it up in a long time. You can go add all these different tabs, rearrange the tabs, find yourself in a happy place, and then uh, set it and forget it. Anyway. All right, we'll end it there. Thank you very much, Adam, for joining me on this Absolutely. DevTools journey. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, for watching Ask Chrome. Hopefully, this was helpful, and we'll see you next time.